the Studio 501c3. I'm your host, Kim Jones, Executive Director of the Nonprofit Village. Studio 501c3 features nonprofit organizations designated by the IRS for providing a public benefit. In most instances, your donations to support them are tax deductible. We're also proud of our partnership with Montgomery Community Media in highlighting our county's excellent nonprofit programs and services. MCM provides access to information relevant to our community. It's your public resource. Joining us today is Allison Stearns. Allison is the CEO of Caring Matters, a nonprofit that offers the support and education to help keep residents or their loved ones from grieving or dying alone. Allison, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Great, so uh, we wanna get into all of these programs and uh, resources that are available. This is a very difficult subject dealing with grief, um, but everyone in the public somehow, some time, some way probably has or will have to uh, deal with grief. And, you know, Caring Matters is one of those organizations that helps with the right tools and resources. So tell us a little bit more about the mission and why the name Caring Matters. Sure. So Caring Matters was actually founded 31 years ago, originally as Hospice Caring. We changed our name a couple of years ago. Um, we are an organization that provides social support services and community education so that nobody dies or grieves alone. And we envision a community that accepts death as a part of life and where um, the processes of death and grieving are embraced um, without stigma. So we really just are a community-based nonprofit organization that provides very grassroots support services to people who are both seriously ill and dying and those who are grieving. Um, and, and a lot of compassion, a lot of the work that you're doing with the programs, which we're going to talk about uh, in just a second, really, um, you know, takes the staff, the volunteers, and provides that compassion that people need at the right time. We do. We have a team of over 200 volunteers, and we're always looking for more volunteers to join our team. And all of our direct services are delivered by volunteers. So we have compassionate volunteers who provide um, friendly companionship and air, run errands and provide transportation and just emotional support for people who are seriously ill and their, and their family caregivers. And then we also have a wide variety of um, wonderful support groups and, and for adults who are grieving the death of a loved one. We have an overnight weekend retreat for adults who are um, recently bereaved after being um, primary caregivers. And we do a lot with children and grief and community education. Okay, so let me, let me get to this issue of children versus adults. What's, what is the difference that you have to deal with when you are supporting children versus adults who are grieving? So many times children who are grieving feel extraordinarily isolated in their situation. A lot of times they're embarrassed to talk about it. They think they're the only person that's ever been through a loss, a significant loss. Um, they don't want to talk to their parent. If, if it was a parent that died, they don't want to talk with their other parent because they don't want to upset their other parent and they want to protect them. So it's an extremely isolating um, position and kids don't know how to advocate for themselves and ask for help and, and explain the situation in the same way. Adults have a, a higher level of responsibility Sure. So sometimes for adults, you know, the, the issues are very different, but the feelings, I think, are very similar. And is Camp Aaron um, a program just for youth? And can you describe what Camp Aaron is? Or sure. Camp Aaron is an overnight weekend, weekend overnight camp for at least 50 kids a year who are ages 6 to 17, and they're grieving the death of a loved one. And they all come together for an overnight weekend at Barty Mountainside. And they have really a combination of um, traditional camp activities like therapeutic recreation and, and um, expressive arts activities. And then they also have activities that are very grief specific. 
but okay. it's an opportunity for them to be together, to learn that they're not alone, and to be start building a legacy for their loved one who died, but to also learn that it's okay to have fun and feel connected and challenge right. themselves. That's an incredible resource. And um, so I assume that a lot of people that might be interested in even contributing or donating um, might, that's where some of those funds could go in order to support programs just like Camp Aaron. Absolutely. Our donors actually can choose which program they'd like to support. We have several children's bereavement programs. We have a school-based program called the Grief Club. We have several children's programs. We also have adult bereavement, community education, and our volunteer helping hands, which is our patient companionship program. So, of course, our donors can designate exactly which program they'd like to support. Okay, so uh, we're going to take a quick break and come back and talk a little bit about the Volunteer Helping Hands program as well as some of your celebrations. But when people want to get in touch with you and they want to do something, we're going to be putting up your information on your website and everything. Will they be able to just contact you and learn more about how they can be trained and um, just in the last 20 seconds or so that we have? Absolutely. We usually offer four trainings a year. Um, they're three-day trainings for program volunteers, and people can choose which program they're interested in, tell us when their availability is, and we find a spot for everybody. It's really a community organization. Oh, wow. That's great. All right. So we've got a lot more to talk about, but we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll find out more about how Caring Matters helps strengthen and support families in our community. You're watching Studio 501c3 on Montgomery Community Media. Please stay with us. I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 88 children is diagnosed with autism. That's a 1,000% increase in the last 40 years. Learn more at autismspeaks.org signs. Brush, brushy, brush, brushy, brush, 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 Welcome back to Studio 501C3. I'm Kim Jones. With me is Allison Stearns, the CEO of Caring Matters. And we're talking about how Caring Matters as a nonprofit really educates uh, people in the community and their loved ones about the end of life process. There are a number of programs, uh, the adult grief support, children's support services, uh, camps, overnight programs. And I wanna talk to you, Allison, about the volunteer helping hands how that program works and, and how people get involved. Great, thank you. So Volunteer Helping Hands is really our original program when we started out as Hospice Caring. It's our hospice support program where volunteers come together and are, go through training and then are assigned to work with a specific patient in Montgomery County who has a life-limiting illness. And it's in any non-medical need that the family might have. So when people think of what a t traditional hospice volunteer does, it's the volunteer that goes in and provides the companionship and the emotional support and plays games and has conversations and will run errands, sometimes do light house cleaning or make lunch um, and, and just become a part of that person's family. Um, advocate for their for them mm -hmm. in any way that they can to help them be less isolated. 
So what about, sometimes you hear about people, um, or I know I've talked to people that say, I want to volunteer, but I am limited by transportation. Um, are there opportunities for people to be supportive in some way where they're not um, physically with the person? Uh, they could make phone calls uh, to them and chit chat with them or anything like that? We have a lot of different kinds of volunteer opportunities. We um, most of our programs are generally in person, but not always, and we do phone support. Um, and we also have very time-specific volunteer opportunities, sometimes with our fundraisers or, or other special events or camp where you can just go for the weekend and don't have to be available physically beyond that. Okay. So we've only got a couple of minutes left. I want to get two uh, questions in here. Number one, um, quickly, you do have a couple of celebrations each year that help raise money for the organization, but also bring you a lot of visibility. Um, how can people get involved and know about those programs? Oh, we would love to have people involved. It, um, we have two major fundraisers a year. One is called Raise Your Glass in the Spring. And it's generally a very warm, fun, celebratory wine tasting event, um, normally in the backyard of, of one of our donors or trustees. And, um, and we really appreciate the support of a lot, not only of our regular donors, but sometimes our community partners and other organizations and businesses. And then in the fall, we have our annual gala. And between those two events, we generate close to half of our operating budget. Wow, okay, and one last question because we've only got about a minute left. Um, you have a lot of resources that are available. I've used some of your resources I've seen on your website, I've seen in some of your e-blasts, um, I've shared with other people. Tell us one or two quick resources that before somebody gets to the point that they are at uh, end of life, need to support someone that might be useful for them that you provide. We've got about 30 seconds. Okay, so we are always able to provide resources. Sometimes people just come to us needing the companionship. Sometimes they need transportation. Sometimes they might need to know about other county resources like respite or uh, other kinds of caregiving options and we can help steer them in the right direction. Um, and, and same thing with grief. Our website is full of resources and, and we always try to help wherever we can. Wow. Okay. So I know there are more things out there. Uh, we have your information that's going to go up on the screen. I want to really thank you, Allison, for being here today. Allison Stearns is the CEO of Caring Matters. Uh, such a great source of information for the audience. For more information about how to help, or information that you need, visit the Caring Matters website at caringmatters.org. Allison, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having and me. Join us. Great, and join us next time on Studio 501C3, your window on nonprofits in Montgomery County. I'm Kim Jones, Executive Director of the Nonprofit Village. See you next time. This episode of Studio 501C3 was sponsored by MBA Growth Partners. first day at school. What's in there? He's well, about to fall anything over. he might need. There's a box of tissues on the bottom and some band-aids. There's a whole first aid kit, actually. Mom, I can handle it from here. You don't have to be perfect. Have a great day. That's too much pressure. Have the day you have. To be a perfect parent. There are two people in the world who want you more than anything. They'll make some mistakes, but they will love you more than you can ever imagine. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov.